Saturday Night Live can feel like a roller coaster ride. Some seasons are great and others are downright awful. But the 25th season of Saturday Night Live was a strong year in our humble opinions. You had a great cast at the time with Will Ferrell, Sherry O'Terry, Anna Gasteyer, Molly Shannon, Chris Parnell, Chris Kattan, Horatio Sanz, and Jimmy Fallon to name a few. It was during an April 2000 episode with host Christopher Walken that a sketch that was relegated to be the last of the show would unexpectedly become one of the most memorable in the show's history. And that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Hailing from New York City, Blue Oyster Cult would take nearly a decade to get their big break. Their first three records were full of overly imaginative lyrics about drugs and Halloween monsters. Referred to as the Thinking Man's Band by the press, the rock press hailed the band as being the future of rock. Cream Magazine referred to them having, and I quote, all the equipment necessary to become the best band in America. While some critics went even further, with Mike Saunders of Phonograph Records saying they had, and I quote, the potential to match the recorded work of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. The only problem was the band didn't have the hits to back up that claim. At least, not yet. In 1976, the band would release their fourth record, Agents of Fortune, that gave the band their first platinum record. One of the contributing factors to the album's success was the song Don't Fear the Reaper. The song would be written and sung by guitarist Buck Dharma. But not everybody was on board with the song, as vocalist Eric Bloom had reservations about the track with Dharma telling GQ, Eric Bloom didn't think it was right for Blue Oyster Cult. The band was formed around Eric as the high-energy, menacing lead singer. He didn't think it was the way the band should go. Despite his objections, the band recorded the song with the lyrical content being partially inspired by Dharma's real life, telling GQ, I had an idea that I wanted to write a love story about transcending death. I was 22, and I had a heart arrhythmia, which developed in my late teens. I thought I might not live much longer. A cardiologist said, it's not something that's going to kill you, but dying had been on my mind. Someone accused the band of promoting suicide with the reference to Romeo and Juliet being together in eternity, but it wasn't the angle the band was going for. The song would peak at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts in America. The impact of the song and the album's success was felt immediately. Even before Saturday Night Live did the infamous cowbell, skit, the song was already part of popular culture as it appeared in the 1978 horror film Halloween, and even author Stephen King referenced it. It also appeared in some B-movies and TV shows in the 90s. So let's talk about the SNL skit. In April 2000, an episode that saw Christopher Walken host the show would see a skit called More Cowbells, centered around the recording of the song in the style of VH1's popular program Behind the Music. The idea of the skit came to SNL cast member and writer Will Ferrell, who told Rolling Stone, Every time I heard the song, I would hear the faint cowbell in the background and wonder, what is that guy's life like? That guy Will Ferrell was wondering about was either producer David Lucas or frontman Eric Bloom, as both have disputed who played the cowbell in the track. Where'd the cowbell come in? Yeah. Oh, that was, that was, it, ironically, it was similar to what happened in the skit, okay? It was, we had put a whole bunch of uh, overdubs on the, on the song, and one of them was um, uh, Randy Brecker. Put a, the, he put a flugelhorn part on it, or a trumpet, or something, in the in the middle part, the that part. So, uh, and we didn't like it. Nobody, nobody in the group liked it, you know. And so, uh, erase that track. So I said, hey, I want to do, I want to do a triangle in that part. That's what I want. I really, I hear a triangle in my head, and they're like, and the the. Uh, one of the producers, there was three, there was Sandy Perlman, Murray Krugman, and David Lucas. David Lucas was a jingle producer, and he said, uh, okay, you can put the triangle on it, but try a cowbell. I just want to hear a cowbell. And I said, why? You think that, it, is the tempo not steady enough? And he goes, no, don't, the tempo is fine. It's, I just want to hear that sound. I said, okay. So I play it, and I'm like, nah, it's not working. And he's like, oh, well, put some tape around it. So I put some tape around it, and he's like, He's like, yeah, yeah, that's it. I said, I don't know. Let me try a, beat, a beater. So I used like a timpani mallet. 
and and everybody's like yes that's it that's it so the skit was written around november of 1999 and was initially pitched for an episode that former castmate norm mcdonald hosted but was rejected it was allegedly pitched as an episode alec baldwin would later host but was turned down again it wasn't until christopher walken hosted the show that the skit got the green light cast member chris Catan would reveal to gq that walken's table read was so good that it convinced the producer lorne michaels to give the skit airtime but despite Despite getting the green light, there wasn't a lot of hope that the skit would make much of an impact. It was relegated to the last skit of the night. Typically, the last half hour of the show is where the worst skits of the show go, and where a lot of viewers tune out. Chris Kattan would tell GQ, if they think a sketch is going to be huge, they make it the first sketch of the night. It was also in a corner of the studio called Death Corner because the studio audience can only see it on TV monitors. It's not an easy place to get laughs. The skit wasn't an accurate representation of how the song was recorded. First off, the song was recorded in 1975, not 1976 like the skit references. Will Ferrell would play a fictional character named Gene Frankel who plays the cowbell on the song while Walken would play the producer, Bruce Dickinson. Both Farrell and Walken's characters were not part of the actual recording of the song. While some may think the name Bruce Dickinson was a reference to Iron Maiden's frontman, it wasn't. It was an SNL intern who was asked to go to a local record store to get the Agents of Fortune album. Instead, the intern got a hits compilation CD and Bruce Dickinson was listed as the reissue producer in the liner notes and worked at the band's record label Columbia Records as a mid-level manager. The cast members went on to credit Walken and Will Ferrell's performance for making the skit a classic. Chris Kattan would tell GQ how they made one adjustment to the skit during rehearsals, recalling, After dress rehearsal, Will came up to me and said, Hey, Kattan. When you say your line, don't blow this for us, Gene, I want you to push me really hard. I have some strength, even though I have the appearance of an ant. I pushed him hard enough to fall backwards, and that's when his belly fell out of the shirt even further. Jimmy Fallon laughed, and that's when the dominoes of character breaking happened. Walken never broke. He's visiting from another planet, so he doesn't understand. The band would admit that they had no idea the skit was coming, but found it hilarious. Even after the skit aired, the band would be introduced at shows using the cowbells sketch. Some fans would even come up to the band to express their condolences over Gene's death as the skit ends with an in-memoriam photo of Gene. Will Ferrell would appear on Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show and admit the skit jokingly ruined Walken's life, as a lot of people asked him for more cowbell or to attend his play performances and bring cowbells. GQ Magazine would report on the song in 2020. The song saw 50,000 plays on satellite and terrestrial radio, and the same year the song earned $637,000 in revenue, not including the album sales. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you later.